Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Today we are making oversized paper buttons or paper button embellishments. We are making very large jumbo ones, medium ones, something in between, and small ones. We will be using music paper, scrapbook paper, painty papers, fabric, maps, book pages, photo paper, texture paste, coloring book pages, foil tape, rubber, felt, stickers, different shapes perhaps. We can play around with stamping and embossing. We can add glitter and foiling. You can have four holes or two holes and they can be packaged in all different ways. And you know what the best part is? Apart from the fact that the possibilities are endless, these buttons are so satisfying, easy, and so much fun to make. Let me show you how. Before we begin, there's three things I want to say. One, I do have a cold, and so my voice is a bit funny at the moment. Two, these are very highly addictive. I made in total 67 buttons over the last two days. And three, these buttons are quite sturdy you can see that thick sturdy. it's almost like chipboard but it's not chipboard because we are mainly using cereal boxes or any type of cardstock or cardboard that you have on hand get it ready you will need it another thing you will need is your chosen materials so i have some painting papers here they're not great works of art it's just paint splattered on a page that looks fabulous once it's cut down into circular shapes. So you can see here, I have a whole stack of that sort of thing. You can see I was hacking into it. Another thing I wanted to mention is that each button is also backed on the other side with something. So you don't see cardstock or cardboard at the back. Like all of the backs are also looking nice. It's an option. You don't have to do it that way, but these kinds of things, painty papers, any of that stuff, you clean your brushes off pages and things like that, you know, keep all of those things and then use them in projects like this. So like I said, you'll need your top layer, which is whatever you want to choose. It can be music pages, it can be coloring pages and basically all of the things that I've mentioned before. Anything really that you think is going to look good on a circular shape, get it ready. Okay, next thing you will need is something to draw a circle with. So you can use one of these. You can use your die cuts if you have die cuts. I happen to have this thing. So I would just trace the circle and then cut it out by hand in most cases because my cutting tool is very dull. You can use a lid, a jar. You can use, what have I got? Anything that's circle, you know, look at this large button. Why not? Or you could have a wonky button it doesn't have to be a perf perfect circle i did make some buttons many years ago and it just came to mind to show you these here it was of course a completely different technique it's really not the same thing but i just wanted to show you how having an irregular shape button can be quite fun too I don't know why not play around with that idea I wanted to and I don't know why I didn't I completely forgot about it and the good thing is you're only cutting your circle once uh, you, you'll see what I mean all right this one has something stuck on on the back of it it doesn't really matter and the thickness of your first paper it doesn't matter at all now what size should I go with let's go I'll, I'll do we're making jumbo oversized buttons so I'm just gonna go real large so we'll do this make your circle and cut it out i'm telling you you will be hooked on making these these are so addictive because they're so simple and easy to make which you are about to find out you probably already know how to make them but you might be wondering what to do with them and that is a question i will answer a little bit later all right now at this stage depending on what you want to use it for i have some ideas which i will share but this is quite, you know, it's got weight to it, but it's not really a button because it's kind of very flimsy. So of course I like to have lots of layers. I want it to look like the real deal. Check this out. You see that, you know, 
this to me is important because of what I'm going to use them for. To you it may not be and you might want to just stick with this. You can see the difference in thickness. So you might be wondering how do I get all the perfect shapes, right? You might want to go and cut all of you. If you have a die cut, perfect. You can just make a whole a bunch of these and then glue them together. But this is how I personally did it. I only cut the very first layer like this. I get some cardboard. I might get two layers of cardboard and then I get another layer for the back. So the back can be anything. It can just be white cardboard, uh, but I'm just going to go for this scrapbook paper that I have. And again, I'm not cutting the perfect circle with that either. So only the very top circle has to be, if you want it to be a perfect circle, it has to be perfect. So you're only cutting the top layer. Okay, now you can only have, if you want, just one piece of cardboard in between, or you can do two. So here's what I do. If you happen to have this thick carpet double-sided tape, which I do because I found it in an op shop, this is perfect because it's quick. So you can glue this layer to this layer to this layer using double-sided tape. It does gum up your scissors, but scissors can be cleaned. But let's say that you don't have the double-sided tape. We're just simply going to use glue. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is grab my first layer and glue it down onto the cardboard. But the important thing is to get to the very, very edge. And I'll show you how to do that. This is a very simple technique. But what you want to happen is your button has to be completely sealed. You can see this one. I didn't see, you can see I'm just uh, sort of looking at over here. There's no layers that are going to peel off. Everything is completely, completely glued together. And I'll show you how to do that now. So I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of paper to protect my desk. Get whatever glue it is that you have in your craft room. I'm just going to do glue stick. Make sure to get all of the edges. Next, I'm going to grab a wet glue. Any glue that you have in your craft room will do. The most important thing is that when you're applying to the glue, you get as close to the edge as possible. I'm not doing a great job, but you will see what I've done in just a moment. And also apply some in the middle. All right, so if you can see that, I tried to get as close to the edge as I can. I was all the way to the edge here, but not so much over here. But in the next step, what I'm going to do is pop it down on my next piece, which is this cardstock here. And then let's get closer. Obviously you want to glue it down, but another thing that you can do is you can smoosh it around like this. You see that glue seeping out to the sides? Perfect, that's how we know. All that glue has gone all the way to the edges and we want all of those edges covered. See that when I press there, all that glue seeping out, probably a little bit too much, but if that does happen, you can just remove the excess glue. And in all honesty, I would much rather glue seeping out than my layers peeling or lifting. I just really don't want that to happen. Okay, so that's the first piece glued to the second piece. And now at this stage, I actually like to put this under something heavy to dry. Not for a very long time, only for about, it depends on your glue, maybe 10, 20 minutes. And I use a large book just like this and just plop it right on top to make sure that it glues down. Now, another thing, if you're going to get obsessive about making these buttons like I did, while one is drying, you go and you make another one and another one, and then you can have a whole heap, you know, you can just stack them in there, in the book, uh, waiting for them to dry, which is what I did with these. I think that's all I have at the moment. So while I'm waiting for this one to dry, I'm going to show you what you would do next. If you do happen to have double-sided tape, you can use that. If you don't have such a wide one as this one, that's fine. You can use strips of thinner double-sided tape. You pop your cardboard down and now I'm going to cut this, but I'm not cutting through, you know, I'm leaving a little bit of cardboard. So I'm cutting through cardboard rather than getting my scissors directly on the sticky double-sided tape. If you don't have double-sided tape, that's fine. I'll show you how to do with glue next. All right, remove the back of the double-sided tape. Now you have this sticky side here and now you will glue that onto your next piece. So if you want to have two layers of cardstock, then you glue it straight down, just like that. 
Don't worry about all this messy stuff around. And now I want to do my final layer, which is I want to do the back. I want to do maybe I can use something like this for the back. So again, I'm going to apply double sided tape, pop it down again. Perfect. Remove that backing off. I wonder if this is large enough. Perfect. And now glue that on top of that. All right. So we have all of these layers and now we need to cut the circle out. So I'll get my scissors and just follow the shape of the circle. And there we have our circle perfectly cut out and the back is also quite beautiful. And you can see this, it's quite thick. Now, I just wanna say here, the more layers you have, the more difficult it is to cut with your scissors. So perhaps it doesn't have to be this thick. Now you might find that the edges are a little bit irregular and a little bit messy looking. I don't know how well you can see here, it's a little bit messy looking. So usually when you go and ink the edges, that kind of tidies everything up. But if you really want to be pedantic and make it really nice, just grab a nail file that you have specifically for your crafting purposes and file away. I didn't do this on all of mine. I only did it on uh, just a select few ones because I'll show you once you seal those edges, it looks perfectly fine. And you can also notice that there's a little bit of irregularity, uh, just in case if you're worried about that, you know, it's not perfect, it's absolutely fine, because all of that is kind of concealed in the next step, which is inking the edges. And you will no also notice that I have on screen, it's kind of blurred, but there's a Sharpie in the background, just in case if you don't have a tool for, you know, inking the edges, you can see how that's finishing it off nicely. If you don't have this tool, then you can use your Sharpie or any color marker that you have and just color that in. And now you can see how that kind of finishes it off nicely, that edge, and I did it at the back as well. If you choose, you may also leave the edges white. Nothing wrong with that. I did it on this one here because this is photo paper. I'll talk about that soon. Uh, but the ink that I'm using, it probably, I don't know, I was scared that it's going to smudge, so I just left it white. Another option is using paint. I just used a little bit of gold paint on my finger and went around the edges and also got it on top of the button as well. And then this one here, absolutely beautiful. Took a bit of work. This is foiling. And the reason why I said it took a bit of work is because with the foiling, you have to apply the glue and let the glue sit for about an hour and then you go over it with the foil. So that's it, that was time consuming. So I only did it on this one button, but there are options, right? Just in case if you were wondering about the foiling, this is what I'm talking about. I have this foil glue and I found this all on the special. And then you get the foil. So you need the foil glue to use with the foil. And then you can do all sorts of fun stuff with the foil. So you can see here, when you have that glue, you apply, you can do writing, you can do all sorts of stuff. And then this gets stuck onto the areas that have glue on it, but not onto any other areas. So that's pretty cool. If you have this type of thing in your home, then you can have a play. You might notice a little bit of glitter on this piece. I actually painted it on prior to gluing it down. Sometimes I will make the button and then apply a layer of whatever. I have this opal glitter paint. I have this sparkle Mod Podge, whatever you have to finish it off. I used this gel medium, gloss gel medium on some of them as well, because I really wanted a, a glossy surface, which this really didn't achieve. The perfect thing for this project would be glossy accents, but of course this is expensive and to apply it over the whole surface and then wait for it to dry, it's just too much work. So I didn't go there, but it is an option perhaps on small buttons. You might want to get real glossy 3D buttons, you know, that would be pretty cool. All right, now back to this one because it's dried. You can see all that glue that seeped out is dry now, and that's fine. We don't mind the glue seeping out. If you don't have double-sided tape, this is what I would personally do, or what I have actually done. I'm just gonna cut this into a little bit of a smaller piece. And then I might use this same background and have a button that's exactly the same on both sides. And then I would simply repeat the process of what I did here. So just go over it with my glue stick apply wet glue all over 
great and then plop it down and then under the book it goes again you can have a whole production going do the first layer it goes under the book all of these buttons and then you start with the second layer and so forth okay now while i'm waiting for that to dry i can go ahead and do the holes on this one so i created myself kind of a template not really but uh, you can just eyeball it or you can make yourself a little template so this is as you can see quite a bit smaller than my button but i can eyeball the, cer the center this one's only for two holes and this middle here was just me determining the middle of this circle and now i can use a pokey tool and just poke right through so you can see those two holes there you can make the holes bigger with something you know like this you might have something thicker to get really thick holes you can use a tool like this to get the holes now i'm finding this tool that i have doesn't go all the way especially with the large buttons doesn't have all the way so it really depends on what kind of equipment you have at home if you happen to have the cropper dial which i do i've been using this one on all of my projects and these little things these things here that do the cutting if you're using double-sided tape they will get gummy and mine did quite a bit but i cleaned it with some type of an oil and this looks really disgusting but i'm showing it to you because this is what i use to clean my scissors and all that stuff and i think is it eucalyptus oil or tea tree oil i'm not sure which one of those removes stickiness but i just wanted to show you in any of your tools that you're using you apply your cleaning whatever you're using onto some sort of a tissue and then you wipe it all down or like how will you you clean a tool like this it's kind of hard to get in there and especially this one here i just kind of saturate this with the oil and then I pop it in there and I kind of just do this, you know, just get it in there the best that I can to get all of the gooey stuff off. Anyway, this might be something that you come across if you're using double-sided tape. Oops. And I did the same thing here. I just kind of did it like this rather than punching holes. I kind of made sure to get that oil on there and it really does clean properly. But I just want to tell you that you don't need to have any special tools because you don't need to have very large holes. You don't need to have eyelets. Just get your needle through. Get a little bit of yarn or whatever you have through. And that looks perfectly fine. You can see those tiny little holes. Nothing wrong with that. But I really like the look of the larger holes. So I use my cropper dial to punch those holes. Now, if you don't have eyelets, which you probably will, if you have a cropper dial, you can always use a Sharpie and go in there and color them a little bit. So they're more noticeable. I don't know how well you can see that, but it kind of seals the holes. And especially if you're making 70 buttons like I did, you might not want to be wasting your eyelets this here is another punch tool that i have i don't actually i use the cropper dial but i'm using these eyelets which in all honesty they are too way too big and they don't fit into this hole but i wanted to show you how you can you can make things work for you so i use you know you can use a pencil make the holes a bit larger just like that pop that in it's still too big it still doesn't fit but i kind of this is what i do like i get it in there any way I know how. You really don't have to have all the special things. And now I need to set the eyelets and I'm going to use my cropper dial for that. And there's my button done. Look how cool and neat that looks. And this is done. There's absolutely nothing that I have to do with this. Okay, now this probably isn't dry yet, but I'm gonna cut it anyway. And again, I'm simply following the circle here, the perfect circle. And I wanted to show you, I'm going to start here, all that glue that seeped out. I don't know how well you can see, but you simply cut it off. And done. I actually think I like this side better. Look how cool that looks. It's perfect, round, it's strong, durable, it's thick. And I'm not even going to bother sanding that down. And if you don't want to use your nail file and you have one of these sanding papers, excellent. Go in there with those if you want to. If you don't, that's absolutely fine too. Maybe you can just smooth it down with your hand if there's any sort of glue. Now for this button, I might use the gold paint instead of the inking tool. I mean, there's probably other ways. You probably don't have to put it on your finger, but oh well. Go around the edge. 
all the way around just like so so all of that edge is sealed and then you might have a bunch of glue here i mean paint not glue and I just smooth it down and give that button a beautiful looking edge look how cool that looks i absolutely love how beautiful that looks and it's not perfect there's imperfections i did it on the back too and i'm fine with that absolutely fine with a little bit of you know imperfect edge all right now i have to wait for this to dry i'm gonna go wash my hands might be a good idea to wear gloves or use a brush or a makeup brush or oh, all sorts of things you can do I wanted to say makeup sponge not brush so you can use one of these you see i've already used this for some other stuff and then apply it on that way okay now that that's dry or almost dry i need to make the holes so this time around i'm going to do four holes i like four holes better than two especially on the large button so again i have a little template it's not great i was eyeballing it you know so i kind of am going to eyeball it again with this plop it there somewhere in the middle does that look like a middle it will be fine make the holes now this one is really difficult to see uh, when i use it in my cropper doll so sometimes i might even you know if it's a lighter material underneath i'll use a sharpie to mark where i need to poke holes or i might use something like white out on this one oh, uh, this correction fluid and just so i can see easier where i need to make the holes does that make sense probably completely relevant but these are little things that we come across, you know, as we're working. Okay, I'm gonna use my tool now to poke the holes or to punch the holes. So I just wanted to show you some of the holes on this one, especially it's not perfectly aligned. Uh, aligned. And as this one also wasn't perfectly aligned, but as soon as you put something through, like a bit of twine or yarn, it evens everything out so you don't have to worry about that another thing i wanted to mention is how far your holes are apart you can see this one quite far apart and then you can see this one very close together so that's another thing that you can play around with i mean didn't i say the possibilities are endless every single button has its own unique feature just look at this beauty i absolutely love how this turned out that's the back, looks as fabulous as the front, love it. And the holes are definitely not evenly spaced. You can see these ones are further apart than the other ones, but it's fine because I just want you to see the difference when you uh, apply a little bit of twine or thread through a little bit of twine, how it makes it less obvious. I don't like this twine. Do we like the black? Not really. And I'm going with gold. I don't know, do you think that it takes away from the asymmetrical or not even holes? I think it does, but in all honesty, I really don't think that it matters that much. I think this button looks scrumptious. I absolutely love how this turned out. All right, now I wanna give you some more ideas. I officially made 69 buttons. I have a few more in the waiting, but you know what? I feel like I'm officially all buttoned out. Just in case, if you're wondering how I made my fabric buttons, which I absolutely love, I think they might be, no, they're not my favorite. They're all my favorite. So if you're wondering how I did that, I have a video on making your own book cloth, which is what this is, book cloth. I'm gonna link the video up there if you wanna have a look. You make the book cloth. You can simply back your fabric onto double-sided tape, which is what I did here, use that. Or what I used for these buttons specifically, I actually purchased this a long time ago. And basically it's just fabric backed onto double-sided tape. That's all it is. So when I remove this, I'm left with that sticky side. So all I did is trace my circle on the back and cut it out and proceeded to back it with cardstock in exactly the same way as I've shown you in this tutorial. And these are my fabric buttons, love them. Next, I mentioned the photo paper and I made a whole heap of photo paper buttons. I have these, some with two holes, some with four holes. I have these, some are embossed, some are not. And then it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. All right, how did I make these? 
I have a video on making your own DIY alcohol inks uh, linked up here. You use old markers to make these beautiful backgrounds. You can do all sorts of stuff with these backgrounds, including making the buttons. Look at this. And then you have these gorgeous, beautiful effects. I absolutely love that glaze. Like I love how it's shiny. Next, this one here is a coloring book page. And you know, you probably have a whole lot. You can see here exactly where I cut it up. And you can see, you, you can do large buttons. You can, I mean, look at this. Do I even need to say anything? Now, I also have a video on DIY texture paste, which I will also link up here. And the way that you would do that, you apply your texture paste before you cut out the circle rather than make the button. And then, I mean, you can do it that way as well, but you probably are not going to get beautiful edges. So that's texture paste in the video. It's not really coming up. I mean, this is all raised texture and it's just absolutely beautiful textured button. All right. Next, I mentioned foil tape and what this is. It's just foil like this, but it's double-sided and I'm really not sure what this is. Like what, what is the purpose of this? Maybe in like electrical something. I'm not sure because I found this in an up shop. But the cool thing about this and foil in general is that you can use your alcohol inks and make all sorts of patterns and beautiful color and then make, you know, make colored buttons like this. It's an option. I mean, not everybody has this, but in case you do, this is something that you can do. And that I think would look really cool. See, as a colorful button. Music pages, scrapbook paper, book pages, and map paper, all pretty self-explanatory. You would do it exactly the same way. And another thing you can do, which is what I've done here, is layer your circles and then make a button. I only did it on one, but I think it looks really beautiful. It would look even better if you had, you know, a few layers. It's just something that you can play around with. Now, you might have noticed this in my intro. Uh, these, I think they were coasters, uh, also from an op shop. And what I like about this is because when I applied the, uh, the eyelets, it kind of made this happen because the eyelets were not long enough. So in order for them to shut, this rubber had to be squeezed in. And I really like how this looks. But anyway, you would need a crocodile for this for sure. But I thought that was just, you know, you can use any, any circular shape that you have. Go and raid your coasters. Now these ones here, they are felt. And again, I found this in an op shop. They were already cut in circles, which is perfect. See, this is how they looked when I, I found a, a little bag of them in a shop and I thought, I don't know what I'm going to use them for. I'm sure I'll find something to use them for. And I love how this looks. It reminds me of Snowman for some reason. So does this. Now stamping, of course, also self-explanatory. You stamp on your paper before you cut it out. And you have, oh, how gorgeous does that look? Absolutely love the look of that. And this, this one here is covered with glitter. Next, raid your stash and find some circular stickers. Very easy. Eliminates the first step of applying glue because it's already sticky. And then maybe you don't need to go overboard, make it very thick. You can just apply one little piece of cardboard. I have some foil tape on the backs of these. Here's an example of a page with circular stickers and they would make really, really cool buttons. You know, pretty cool. Now on this one here, you can see I added some little dots of paint after I've cut out the button and you know, it's not, nothing special, not bad. You've seen this one. Now I only have a few to go. So love this one here, painty papers. I did a video recently. It was this video here. I'm going to link it up there. We made something really cool with these you can say really quite ugly. I mean, it's not ugly. I wouldn't say ugly, but there's some ugly ones in my pile. Don't you worry about that. I mean, that's not absolutely amazing artwork, but it can be. When you make it into a button and you ink the edges and you have the holes, maybe you have some thread. Perfect. And on and on it goes. I'll just show you these last few ones. So I have officially made 69. 69 buttons you can have a little series using the same kind of painty paper and make look same paper two different looks because this one's got two holes this one's got four that's gold that's 
not gold this one's got a thread this one doesn't you know different kinds of looks and then this last one another painty paper one with some glitter added and i challenge you to make a whole lot of buttons can you make more than 69 but in two days because you know why i'll tell you why in my next video i'm going to show what you can do with these buttons and how you can apply them to your craft projects what are you going to do with them what are you going to do with 75 buttons i don't know are you going to make 75 buttons because if you are you have to tell me so that i can get on top of these ones no it's not a competition i'm just kidding i was going to do this segment in this video today show you how what, what are you going to do with the buttons and how you can apply uh, apply them to project and give you all sorts of different ideas on what you can do with them basically but i'm really really feeling crook i really am and i feel like i just want my bed and i'm just over the buttons to be honest i dreamt about the buttons last night it was button mania in my house in the last two days i think this one here is my favorite the one i did on video today let me know which one is your favorite or what material is your favorite i think also the fabric ones i love the fabric ones and i love the i love them all i really love them all oh i forgot to mention of course the different shapes this is something that i wanted to explore further maybe make uh, larger heart buttons and butterfly buttons and what else can we do anything can be a button any shape look at some of my actual buttons for inspiration so you can see we have a bird here we have a butterfly anything that you make and you plop two holes on it is a button what else do we have we have a leaf anything else we can do a flower you know they don't have to be circles they can be pretty much a, you can have an owl and make it into a button you can have a sunflower and make it into a button right you see where i'm going with this yes take your existing embellishments and make them into a button but what do you do with all of the buttons well i'm going to tell you what to do with them in my next video so stay tuned but in the meantime please let me know what you think do you feel inspired i always ask this question because this is what it's all about this is why i'm sharing all of these ideas because i want you to feel the urge like i did when i'm sick i really want to go to bed and sleep but i also really want to make buttons comment down below do you feel inspired have you made any buttons already watching this video and will you be coming back to watch the next video and just so you know in case if you're here two years from today uh, and that video is already done and dusted the video will be linked or rather pinned right underneath this video so if you're watching this in the future you don't have to kind of go scouring through all of my videos to find the next video which will be what to do with the buttons as i've already said probably 20 times time for me to stop talking thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye